How you doing? My name is Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey, and welcome to Tool Time Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about the AMM1 from SMD, DMR Engineering. I've been meaning to talk about this meter for a while, but it takes a little while to set up and we're crazy busy at the shop. So this was a perfect time to do it because I got a prototype amplifier that I can't show yet. So um, it's a pre-production model, so we're running it through its paces. So since I had to use the AM1 anyway for the first part of this test, I figured it'd be a perfect time to make a video so I could show you guys how it works. Um, we have the amplifier hooked up to a single uh, AGM battery. It is a uh, 36 amp hour, nothing crazy. This amplifier is rated 800 watts. So um, bridged, it's a four channel amp, so bridged 400 watts times two. We're testing a bridge channel and make it nice and simple. We have our trusty Audison 15 inch uh, test woofer in a vented enclosure. Uh, it's about 1.75 cubic feet. We have our Lumi scope here hooked up so you could see that we're not clipping the signal at all. If we were clipping the signal, the SMD meter would show us that we we're clipping. So we're gonna go ahead and start the test. So with the SMD meter, you have the two power probes that you hook up on when you're testing uh, RMS amplifier power. So if you download the manual, the AM1 manual, it'll show you why this is more accurate than doing the typical uh, AC voltage test because the way you can typically measure an amplifier's output, uh, you normally put a dummy, dummy load on it so you don't smoke the subwoofers. Um, then you put your, you play, let's say a 40 hertz tone, you set your meter to AC voltage, and then you turn the amplifier up until it clips and measure the AC voltage coming out of the amplifier. The problem is that's not giving you true RMS power. Um, that's showing you how much AC voltage the amplifier can do without clipping. Um, if you read through the manual, um, Tony explains that a 5,000 watt amplifier, when it puts out enough AC voltage to produce 5,000 watts, is generally doing about 3,800 watts once you've power in power factor and all kinds of other things. Plus, a speaker is a reactive load. So, as the speaker's moving and at different frequencies, because we've measured this at a few different frequencies, you will have different RMS watt. So, with this meter, you can tell what exactly is going to your woofers, speakers, at what frequency at what, any given time, so it's telling you the RMS, true RMS power, the true wattage going to your speaker at any given time in the enclosure in your vehicle. So we have it hooked up to our test power supply. What you have to do is hook up power and ground to the amplifier, then any of the speaker leads, whether it's the positive or negative, run it through the meter. He says you cannot test true RMS wattage if you're not running the speaker wire through the mirror. That's how you test power factor. So we, it's very simple to do, power and ground. One of the speaker leads, disconnect it from the amplifier, run it through the meter, and then reconnect it back to the amplifier. So we have our impedance generator, our signal generator and impedance meter as our source. Okay, we have our signal meter powered on. We set our range. We're gonna go ahead and plug the RCA in here. We're going to go ahead and flip the remote turn on switch on the amplifier on. As you can see, we have a clean sine wave, no clipping. 17 volts AC. Okay, I had to put a new battery in the meter and restart the test. Now you're going to set the meter mode. Twenty nine watts. 
211 watts RMS. So this amplifier is doing exactly, it's doing a little bit more. It's uh, rated at 400 watts RMS, virgin tool forum load. We're getting 411 certified, no clipping. You saw it on the scope here. We have no clipping and the clip indicator never lit up on the AM1. So this amplifier manufacturer did exactly, did more than what they promised. Um, the signal was clean, we proved it. Um, the power was exactly what they said it was going to be. So this meter can be used to test an amplifier that you feel is faulty, to test an amplifier that you feel is rated unrealistically, to test and There's a bunch of ways you could use it. You could use it to test the, power, the electrical system on the car to make sure that the car can give you enough power for your amplifier to do its job. Uh, we don't use it all the time, but when we do use it, it helps us out, saves a lot of time. And um, this little device embarrasses a lot of manufacturers and a lot of that are building products that don't really do what they say they're gonna do. Um, it's a uh, pretty good piece, simple use. I think I just proved it to you. And uh, it's a handy tool to have around the shop. We use it a lot because we do a lot of customer supplied parts and then we're not familiar with some of these amplifier companies. So if we run into an issue, we get to see what the amplifier is doing at what frequency uh, what the RMS power is, and whether the woofer is happy in the enclosure. So um, we have the entire suite of Diamore tools. This is just another one. I hope this video was helpful, and uh, see you next week.